Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all praises are for Allah Azza wa Jalla. All praises are for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, who has blessed us with many of His blessings and favors. And from among the great ni'mat and the great favors of Allah that He has given to us, is that He has enabled us and has given us the chance and has given us the opportunity and has blessed us with this blessed, great and holy month of Ramadan, which we are witnessing and which we are passing. This is indeed a very, very great favor from among the favors of Allah. It is indeed a gift from Allah. It is a gift from Allah and a guest from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A guest that comes to us every year. A guest arriving at our doorstep sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants us to see how we will treat his guests. When a guest comes to you, the guest wants to see how you treat him, and the one who sent the guest also wants to know how you have treated that guest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen as a special blessing to give the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this gift, the gift of Ramadan. And here we are passing the days and the nights. Surely Allah is looking at our deeds. Allah is looking at how much we appreciate it. Allah is looking at how much we value this month of Ramadan. If we don't value it, then who knows Allah may take it away from us or Allah may take us away from it. As is the way and the usul of Allah. Whenever a servant does not appreciate the favor from Allah, Allah separates that favor from him. This is why it is important that we treat Ramadan and give Ramadan its haq and its due, subhanallah. Allah has blessed us in this way that the month that He has created is so powerful that with the mere coming of the month, it revives our iman, subhanallah. With the mere presence of the month, it revives our spirit, subhanallah. With the coming of the month, it refreshes us. It makes us more aware of Allah. It makes us become more muttaqi and pious and righteous, subhanallah. It kindles the faith and the light of faith in our heart. And we find ourselves doing the things that we have not done for the past 11 months. And we find our hearts becoming soft. And we find ourselves wanting to listen to the Holy Quran. We find ourselves finding the time to recite the Quran when probably for 11 years we did not find that time to recite the Holy Quran. This is the magic of the month and the miracle of the month and the power and the glory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in Ramadan. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear beloved brothers and my dear sisters, has placed so much of his blessings in the month of Ramadan that we are witnessing. He has filled this month of Ramadan with so much goodness. He has filled the month of Ramadan with his kindness, with his grace, and with his benevolence. Allahu Akbar. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only in the month of Ramadan, for the sake of you and I, the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all other believers, Allah has given the official order to the angels on the face of the earth to lock up the shayateen and the devils and the satan and to cast them aside, subhanallah. That only occurs in the month of Ramadan, no other month. Allah has done that for us through His mercy. In addition to that, Allah on account of His mercy, He has ordered the angels, especially the Malik, the keeper of the fire of hell, He has ordered the Malik to lock and shut all the doors of Jahannam only in the month of Ramadan, subhanallah. Only in the month of Ramadan that the doors of Jahannam, all of them become luck. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful and Allah is so kind that He does not want to send any one of the ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the fire of hell. Allah is so compassionate in this month that only in this month Allah has given the order to the Ridwan, the keeper, of the doors of Jannah to open all the doors of what? Jannah, subhanallah, only in the month of Ramadan, not the other months. 
only in the month of Ramadan for the Ummah and the, the, the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has ordered that all the doors of Jannah be open as an encouragement, targheeban lil mu'mineen, as an encouragement to what? The Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As an encouragement to the believers, telling them, O oh, my servants, O oh, the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the time you can increase in your good deeds. Do any type of good deed, subhanallah, recite the Quran, glorify Allah, praise Allah, make istighfar. Every one of your deeds, subhanallah, will reach directly into the doors of Jannah. And these things will be waiting for you over there, Allahu Akbar. That is true Allah's kindness. In which, which other month can we see this, subhanallah? The hadith and the ahadith that speak about these features in the month of Ramadan are from among the most authentic narrations recorded by Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Imam Tirmizi, subhanallah. There is no shak, there is no doubt, subhanallah, in what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَهُوَ الصَّادِقَ masduq He is the truthful one. Allah has made him the truthful one. Whatever he says with the tongue, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is exactly, as you and I pass the days and the nights of Ramadan, Breaking fast at time, eating sahri at time, going to our work at time, giggling and gargling at times, making jokes at time, wasting times at times, subhanallah. What happens in the invisible, invisible world is subhanallah so great, we cannot even imagine. What is happening in Jannah? Jannah is being decorated for the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A special feature in the month of Ramadan, a special gift given to the believers in Ramadan. That the paradise and the Jannah are being decorated, subhanallah. And the other angel said to the Ridwan, Oh Ridwan, what is taking place? What is this that is taking place? He says, don't you know it is the month of Ramadan for the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Great things are occurring. May Allah give us the understanding of some of these things so that we will know it is indeed the greatest month that Allah has given to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His blessings, His benevolence. He's so gracious in this month. He's so kind-hearted in this month. He is so given in this month and so caring this month that for small, small deeds and little deeds, Allah gives an abundance and a tremendous amount of good deeds. Small little good deeds, subhanallah. Allah just wants to see the servants. Allah just wants to see the believers. They are trying their best to do something good for their own souls and He will give. Allahu Akbar and give and give and give again. What does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? about this beautiful act. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man fattara sa'iman, Man fattara fihi sa'iman, Kana maghfiratan li dhunubihi wa itqa raqabatihi min an-nar. Whosoever, Allahu Akbar, Whosoever gives a fasting person something to break his fast, How big is that action? Subhanallah. How expensive is that action to give someone something to break his fast? Not expensive, not big, small leader, subhanallah. But what is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying? Man fattara, man fattara fihi sa'iman. Whosoever gives in the month of Ramadan a fasting person, something to break his fast, then on account of that, then there will be forgiveness for all his sins. Kana maghfiratan li dhunubihi. There will be forgiveness for what all his sins and emancipation for him from the fire of hell, subhanallah. People work their whole lives to just be protected from the fire of hell. People work their whole lives just to get Allah to forgive their sins. The Prophet says in the month of Ramadan, you give somebody someone to, something to break the fast, Allah will forgive your sins. When the Sahabas heard that, if you were to make an announcement, who is there to feed people and give them something to break the fast? People will think it's a big thing. It will cost a lot of money. So many things we have to buy. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Laysa kulluna najidu ma nufattiru sa'im. Allahu Akbar. Sahabas were humble and simple. They pleaded with the Messenger of Allah. On one hand, they wanted the rewards, but at the same time, they were struck with poverty. They couldn't afford Allahu Akbar. So they pleaded with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, 
Not each one of us could afford to give somebody something to break the fast. In fact, sometimes we don't have anything for our own selves. What can we give to another person? The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah gives the same reward. The same reward that he has mentioned, Allah gives this reward to someone who gives a date to someone to break his fast. Allah gives the same reward to a person who gives another one a sip of water to break his fast. Allah gives the same reward to a person who gives another one a taste of milk to break his fast, subhanAllah. Small deeds, great rewards. When? In the month of Ramadan. That is the month we have in our hands. Now, may Allah give us the tawfiq to understand it. That is the month Allah has given to us, Allahu Akbar. In another, in the same tradition, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this month of Ramadan, Allahu Akbar, your deeds, the rewards of your deeds just automatically become increased to the extent that you get unlimited rewards. Your rewards are not even measured. Yani Allah is so happy with you. Allah is so, Allahu Akbar, so happy. And Allah is so kind in the month. Allah is ready to give everything to you, Allahu Akbar. Everything to you. You just make a little effort. That's all. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, من عد فيه فريضة كان كمن عد سبعين فريضة فيما سوى whosoever does one compulsory duty in this month like a first act like a first salat then he gets the rewards as if he had done seventy first act in another month الله أكبر where can you get another bargain besides the month of Ramadan الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله فلله الحمد how great and kind Allah is how giving Allah is Allah doesn't want hardship for us. In order to encourage us, Allah says, my servant, just a little thing you do. You, that's all you do. That's all you do and I will give you everything. Subhanallah. Just a small thing you have to do. So, so much rewards. Just for small acts. A small little thing. Costs no money. Takes no time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to reward the servant. Not only that. But Allah, just as Allah is great in His kindness, and just as Allah is great in His generosity, and just as Allah is great in His love to the servants in the month of Ramadan, so too Allah is great in His sifat of forgiving. Allah is extremely forgiving in the month of Ramadan. In no other month Allah is so forgiving as is in, He is in the month of Ramadan. This is why the month of Ramadan, it is called Shahru, Shahr al-Qur'an, the month of the Qur'an. It is called Shahr al-Barakatin, the month of Baraka. It is called Shahr al-Azim, a great month. But it is also called Shahr al-Maghfira, the month of Allah's forgiveness. Because this is the month in which Allah forgives and He forgives abundantly, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, outside the month of Ramadan, Allah forgives. Allah forgives so many sins outside the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah, there is a beautiful tradition that has been recorded by Imam Muslim alayhi rahma, narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, who made a cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala said that there were some polytheists from Makkah, some mushrikeen, for their entire lives they worship idols. They came to the Prophet of Allah. Abdullah bin Abbas said there were people who murdered a lot of people and they committed a lot of shameless deeds and actions. Fornication, adultery, every type of shameless deed they committed. Besides shirk, besides murdering a lot of people, shameless deeds they committed. They came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, إِنَّ مَا تَقُولْ وَتَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ لَحَسَنٌ O oh Muhammad, what you are saying and what you are inviting, it is beautiful, it is good. We like what you are saying. You are saying good things. We like what you are inviting to, it is good. لَوْ تُخْبِرُنَا أَنَّ لِمَا عَمِلْنَا كَفَارًا We just want you to tell us one thing, O oh Muhammad. If we accept Islam, your faith, will we be forgiven 
for all this shirk? Will we be forgiven for all these murders we committed? Will we be forgiven for all these shameless deeds that we did? This is the question. Before the Rasul of Allah could actually give an answer, the ayah of Surah Zumar came from Jibreel alayhi salam, where Allah was revealing to the Prophet to tell them, Subhanallah, Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to announce it to all of them and all of us and to the whole mankind. Where Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Qul, ya ibadi al-ladheena asrafu ala anfusihim ala anfusihim or those who have transgressed their souls with many sins la taqnatu min rahmatillah do not ever despair of the mercy of Allah. Don't ask the questions if Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive you. That question should never come in the mind of any individual. Don't ask if Allah will forgive you. Say, Allah will forgive me. Allahu Akbar. La taqnatu mi rahmatillah. Do not ever become hopeless of Allah's mercy. Do not despair of Allah's mercy. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. La taqnatu mi rahmatillah. Do not ever despair of Allah's mercy. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins Allahu Akbar Allah forgives all sins Allahu Akbar Because he is al-ghafoor Innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim Because Allah is ghafoor the most forgiven And Allah is al-rahim the most merciful one Subhanallah And they were forgiven Subhanallah, in another hadith, Imam Ahmad recorded the tradition from the great Sahabi Amr bin Abbasah radiyallahu ta'ala. He said, Ja'a rajulun ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa shaykhun kabir yad'umu ala asa. He says, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very, very old man. The man was so old, he couldn't even stand and walk directly. The man was leaning on a staff and leaning on a stick. He came to the Messenger of Allah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Inna li ghadaratun wa fajaratun, O Messenger of Allah, I have a lot of shameless deeds that I have done. O Messenger of Allah, they are so shameless, they are so heinous, I cannot even begin to express and tell you what I have done, O Messenger. He says, I have a, a lot of ghadarat and disloyal, disloyalties. I have cheated. I have robbed. I have done so many wrong things. O Prophet of Allah, فَهَلْ يُغْفَرُ لِي Will I ever be forgiven? With a man like me with so many sins, disloyalties, shameless deeds, subhanallah, shameful deeds, the deeds are so, have so much, yani they are so wicked and they are, they are so bad. Allahu Akbar, shameless deeds, he said, O Prophet of Allah, will Allah ever forgive me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him. He says, Alasta tashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Don't you testify that there is no God but Allah? He said, Bala. He said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, I do testify there is no, there is no God but Allah. Wa ashhadu annaka Rasulullah. And I also testify that you are the messenger of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Qad laku. Well, then you are forgiven. Laka. Go ahead, you are forgiven. Subhanallah. What you have to ask? Allah is most forgiven. Subhanallah. In another tradition, Imam Hakim narrated the tradition. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting. Another person came. And when he started, to, when he sat in front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, just remembering the amount of sins he committed, he started to weep, he started to cry, and he started to scream, saying, "Wa dunuba, wa dunuba, wa dunuba! Oh my sins, oh my sins, oh my sins!" Thinking that he has no way out, Subhanallah, cried and pleading before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for his sins. He was actually saying, "O Prophet of Allah, my sins are so much. I do not think Allah will ever forgive that amount of sins." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "Qul, say, say, make a dua and say, Allahumma, maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhunubi, O Allah." Your maghfirat and your forgiveness are more than my sins. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful dua. No matter how many sins you have committed and whatever they are, you are telling Allah, Oh Allah, 
your maghfirat and your sins are much more than my sins. وَرَحْمَتُكَ أَرْجَ عِنِّي مِنْ عَمَلِي And O oh Allah, your rahmat, I have more hopes in your rahmat than I have hopes on my amal and my good deeds. In other words, the servant is saying, O oh Allah, yes, I have some good deeds, but I can't put any trust and reliance on that. I do not know if you will ever accept that. But what I do have hope in is your rahmat, O oh Allah, that I can pin my hope and reliance on. Say that dua. The man said it once. The Prophet ﷺ says, Ud. He said, repeat it. The man said it twice. He said, Qum, faqad ghafar Allahu laka. Now you stand up and go, Allah has forgiven your sins, subhanAllah. This is outside Ramadan. These are people who live their lives in shirk and kufr. And they came and Allah had forgiven them. What to speak about believers who bow to Allah every day, who prostrate to Allah every day, who are living so long with the kalima in their hearts, with iman in their hearts, with Islam in their bodies, bowing, calling Allah's holy names night and day. What to speak about them? How much more Allah will forgive them? This is the month, subhanAllah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed so that we will seek forgiveness. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, this month of Ramadan, it is what such a month that Allah says, that He said, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives sins, sins of every kind. The believers should never ever lose hope. The believers should never become hopeless. But the believers, we must, my dear beloved brother, brothers and sisters, we must look at the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this month the ideal month, the month where He will accept all our du'as. The month where He will forgive all our sins. So this is where you and I must seize the opportunity when Allah is already forgiven sins. And more so He will forgive the sins of the believers even more because they are already believers. They are already bowing to Him when a believer is accustomed to making du'a to Allah. And a believer is accustomed to making the dhikr of Allah. And a believer is accustomed to reciting the Quran. The angels around the arsh of Allah gains familiar, familiar, familiarity with the what? The voice of that. The angel starts to familiarize themselves with the voice of the servant. And when the servant begins to say, Allahumma, O Allah. And the servant begins to say, Rabbana. The hadith says the angels around the arsh of Allah begin to plead to Allah and begin to say, Oh Allah, this servant, we know his voice. Oh Allah, this is that servant of yours who calls on you every day, who calls in the morning and calls in the evening. Oh Allah, he's calling. He's calling on you. Please accept his dua. It's the same thing that happened with Jonah, Yunus alayhi salam, subhanallah. When Yunus alayhi salam was in the belly of the whale and the belly of the huge fish, and Allah ordered the fish or the whale that take into yourself Yunus, uh, but he is not your meal, don't eat him. So Jonah, as soon, as soon as he was thrown out from the boat, he landed inside the mouth of the whale and went straight into the stomach of the whale. And the whale was ordered by Allah to keep Yunus alayhi salam for an appoint, appointed time where it will then vomit him out on the shore. As the Quran says. Yunus alayhi salam was in the belly of the whale and the whale was moving down deep, deep down in the ocean where there were stones and trees growing beneath the ocean. And Yunus alayhi salam was listening to these stones making the tasbih of Allah. Saying, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina dhalimeen. He was hearing this, Allahu Akbar, in the tafsir of the Quran. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka into inni kuntu mina dhalimeen. There is no God but you, O oh Allah. Subhanaka, glory be to you. I am from among the wrongdoers. This is a Nabi. What wrong could he have done? But yet he's saying to Allah, I am a wrongdoer. The sifat of every believer is humility. The sifat of every believer is humility. To always humble ourselves to the mercy of Allah and beg His forgiveness. We may not remember what we have done wrong, but Allah remembers that. 
And what we have done already is already inscribed in the book of deeds. And if we can't remember it on the day of judgment, Allah will give us the book and say, Iqra kitabak, you read your book, read what you used to do on the feast of the earth. But if we were fortunate people that before we die, we raise our hands and turn in repentance to Allah, then my dear beloved brothers and sisters, we could get all those things wiped out from the book of deeds. So they will not even show up on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu says that. When Allah forgives a servant, he just does not just forgive the servant. You know what Allah does? He orders the angels, wipe it out from the book. Allahu Akbar. So it will not show up. There will be no record of that deed, Allahu Akbar at all. Absolutely no record of that deed. That it will never be seen. Allah will wash it away, Allahu Akbar. But woe unto those who live their lives and they do not seek repentance from Allah and they die with the same burden of sins on their head. May Allah protect us from being such people. So Yunus is in the belly of whale, the whale and he is making tawbah to Allah. A Nabi of Allah, Yunus is so great that an entire surah was revealed called Surah Yunus. And he's saying, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. The voice started to raise from the deep oceans, above the oceans, in the midst of the air, climbed through the seven heavens and reached unto in front of the arsh of Allah. The angels hear the voice. And they said to Allah, O oh Allah, we are hearing the voice, a feeble voice, coming from a far, far land. And that servant is calling on you, O oh Allah. But the voice sounds familiar, O oh Allah. It is as if we have heard that voice before. Allah says, don't you recognize that voice? He said, no. He said, Abduna Yunus, he's our servant Yunus alayhi salam. He has been placed in a trial. They said, oh Allah, please, he's your servant. We have always heard him calling on you night and day, morning and evening. His whole life he has been calling on you. Oh Allah, now he's in distress. Oh Allah, relieve him from that distress. Listen to him, accept his dua. Immediately, Allah ordered the fish to vomit him. On that, the tafsir and the commentators have stated that when a person is accustomed to calling on Allah, the angels begin to recognize his voice. And they also say, Oh Allah, this is your voice, the voice of your servant who calls you every morning, Oh Allah. Now he wants something, Oh Allah, give it to him. And that's why that dua is so powerful that any time a person is in distress, he simply has to recite the dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al-dhalimeen. Allah says in the Quran, if Yunus did not recite that dua, he would have remained in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. That is how powerful that dua is. If he did not recite that dua, he would have remained in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. We don't recognize the power of the words we recite. We take it for granted. We say, oh, it's so easy to recite. It mightn't be great. <laughs> yes, it is indeed very, very great. We just have to use it and we will see. This is why, my dear beloved brothers and my dear sisters, half of the month has already passed. Let's ask ourselves, what have we done for our souls and the hereafter? Ask ourselves. How did we spend our nights? The most precious nights of the year, the nights of Ramadan. Did we waste our time? Did we spend sitting behind the television, all talk, all blag, wasting our time? Did we get up for tahajjud when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaykum bi qiyam al-layl, fa innahu da'bu salihina qablakum. He said, please, he said, stand up for tahajjud every night, for it has been the practice of all the righteous people before. He says, wa muqarrabatun ila rabbikum. It is a means of getting closeness to Allah, and it is a means of what muqaffaratun li sayyatikum. It is a means of getting forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this month is not a month to waste. This month and the remaining days is not days and nights to commit sins. How beautiful the Arab poet said, the great scholar, the great righteous saint of Allah. He said, Ya dhalladhi ma kafahu fi rajab. He said, oh that person, oh that person who committing sins in Rajab was not sufficient for him. Hatta asa rabbahu fi shahri shaban. 
to the extent that when the month of Shaban came in, he still continued to commit sins. He says, oh, the one that committing sins in Rajab was not enough for him and continued to disobey his Lord in the month of Shaban. He said, لَقَدْ أَضَلَّكَ شَهْرَ الصَّوْمِ بَعْدَهُمَا he said, certainly the month of fasting has come after those two months, Rajab and Sha'ban. فَلَا تُسَيِّرْهُ عَيْذًا شَهْرَ إِسْيَانٍ So please, my brothers, do not make Ramadan a month of committing sins. Allah Akbar. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, you have done it in Rajab. Rajab has gone. You can't do anything except make tawbah. Then you also, oh believers, you have committed sins in Sha'ban as if Rajab was not enough. Okay, Shaban has gone, gone. You can't undo what you have done, but you can make tawbah. But Ramadan has arrived. Will you make Ramadan a month of sins? لا تسيره أيضا شهر إسياني. Do not ever make Ramadan a month of sins. He says, "What will the Quran wasab fihi mujtahidan?" He says, "Recite the Quran and make a lot of tasbih in, in this month. Glorify Allah, praise Allah, Subhanallah." In this month, make a lot of effort in that. فَإِنَّهُ شَحْرُ التَّسْبِيهٍ وَقُرْعَانِ For certainly this is the month of glorifying Allah and praising Allah. And this is the month of reciting the Qur'an. Subhanallah. He said, فَكَمْ مَنْ تَعْرِفُ كَمْ تَعْرِفُ مِمَّنْ صَامَ فِي سَلَفٍ He said, كَمْ تَعْرِفُ مِمَّنْ صَامَ فِي سَلَفٍ how many people you know who used to fast in the past? من بين أهل وجيران وإقواني from among your own family members, from among your neighbors and from your friends. How many people you know that used to fast in the past? أفناهم الموت but death brought an end to them. They are not. They are no longer here. They were just like you fasting in the month of Ramadan, but are they there with you? They have gone. أفناهم الموت that has destroyed them. That has taken them away. But you are alive today. You are alive today. They have gone. Your family members you knew. Who used to sit with you in Sahri. Who used to break fast with you. They are not with you in this month of Ramadan. Your friends who used to meet for Tarawi, They are not with you. Your sisters and brothers. Who used to say Ramadan Mubarak to. They are not with you subhanallah. Those who used to give iftari, they are not with you. Those who used to give fidya, they are not with you. Those who used to see in the masjid reciting Quran every day, they are not with you. They have gone. But where are you? You are still here. Make something for yourself today before tomorrow comes in your life that you are not here. Value the time. Value the days. Value the night. Because tomorrow may never come in your life. And that is what we have to do for the remaining days and nights of this blessed month. Let us not become losers. Believers are not losers. Believers are not failures in life. Believers always want to be successful. And we want to be successful not only here, but in the hereafter. Let us do something for our own soul in this month, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Let us beg Allah to forgive all our sins. Allah is forgiven. Allah waits, subhanAllah. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah stretches out his hand. Allah stretches out his hand for the sinners of the night to turn to him in repentance during the day. And Allah stretches out his hand in the night for the sinners of the day to turn to him in repentance. Subhanallah. Every day, every night, every morning at the time of Tahajjud, Allah announces to us, Hal mi Is there anyone seeking my forgiveness that I may forgive him? Is there anyone asking for sustenance I may give him? Is there anyone upon whom a calamity has come that I may remove the calamity? Every time for the tahajjud time, subhanallah, Allah makes that announcement. Where are the believers? What are we doing when Allah is calling on us? We call on Allah, but Allah calls on us at tahajjud time. Allahu Akbar, how generous Allah is. How kind, how loving Allah is. That we always have to call on Allah, but at tahajjud time, Allah is calling on us. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said it. In Jannah, there are palaces and there are rooms. They are so beautifully decorated. It is made with crystal glass, beautiful glass, that from inside you can see outside, and from outside you can see inside. The Sahabas were wrong. When the Prophet ﷺ spoke about that beautiful Jannah, a person said, O Prophet of Allah, 
Tell us who will go to that Jannah. So once we hear, describe, we will become like those people and go to that Jannah also. See, the Sahabas, they always want to go to Jannah and we must have that also. He said that Jannah is for those people who have three qualities. They are those people who, who kalam, they speak words and their speech is good and sweet, subhanallah. They do not ever speak to insult and abuse other people. They do not ever speak to harm people. They do not ever speak to injure people. They don't speak to actually affect the heart of people. They speak good. They speak nice. They are people who feed food to other people. And they are people also who get up for tahajjud salat while everybody else is asleep. This jannah will be given to such people, subhanallah. So those who wake up for tahajjud, there is a lot in store for those people. May Allah make us from among those people. Two special times as I close, I remind myself and you, from these remaining days while we do what we do during the days and night, be cognizant, recognize two special times that we do not waste at all and engage ourselves in du'as, the time of tahajjud. Perform tahajjud and make du'a to Allah and cry before Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says, when you make dua, cry before Allah. Allah loves to see you crying. These tears are dearer to Allah than anything else. The tears that comes on account of the crying, weeping heart. Tahajjah time. And the time just before we break the fast. A time where duas are always accepted. Let us not be unmindful of this. Let us use the remaining days and night in a good manner. We beg Allah to forgive us. We beg Allah to give us the understanding of these days and nights of Ramadan so we will use it in the best possible manner so that after Ramadan we will not regret but we will say Alhamdulillah I can say I have used Ramadan to the best of my ability and my rewards are with Allah. May Allah forgive you and I. May Allah bless you and I. Wal akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.